Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment. This show is brought to you by Perez Tire Center, located at 72 Milton Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Aces Bell Bond, Yasmin Khan, quick response 24-7, easy payment 203-257-6228. Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, specializing in Sifu e Churrasco. Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop, located at 815 Lafayette Boulevard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Evolution Sports Bar and Cafe, located at 1279 North Avenue in Bridgeport. Miranda & Sons Automotive, specializing in brakes, electrical system, diagnostic check, full general auto repairs, contact Louis Miranda at Miranda & Sons. In Bridgeport Auto Glass, 1227 Barnum Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Visit www.bridgeportautoglassshop.com. And finally, Moran Insurance Agencies, protecting your future. Call 203-864-6232 or visit www.moraninsuranceagencies.com. <laughs> you guys welcome to super elite entertainment i'm your host lola and i am here uh uh i messed up can i try again <laughs> hi you guys welcome to super elite entertainment i'm your host lola and i am broadcasting from our amazing studio right here located in downtown bridgeport Tonight, we are honored, we are excited beyond belief, because after two years of being here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, our founder of Super Elite Entertainment Studio, Jason Rodriguez, is going to be joining us on the hot seat tonight. So I hope you are ready like never before. He is pumped up, and he's excited to talk about his life, where he comes from, his background, and what inspired him to open up this amazing studio studio right here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, I hope you are ready. Please share this live broadcast into your timeline, upload the link, share it, send it to someone that's watching right now so that other people can come and join us here in our studio. Again, if you don't know who I am, I'm the most sexiest, the most magnificent Lola. And I hope you have fun tonight. God bless. I bring your hands in the Moran Insurance Agency. We are here to protect your future. Come on guys, join me. Let me show you around. It's all about protecting what's important to you. The Moran Agencies are here to protect your future. We are here to build a water protection around you and your family. From your auto and life and retirement, the Moran Insurance Agency has you back. To protect your family from mayhem, please visit us at moraninsuranceagencies.com or give us a call at 203-864-6232.
What's up, you guys? Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment Studio, which is located right here in downtown Bridgeport. You guys, I am so excited to be here broadcasting live tonight from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I'm really excited because tonight is the last Tuesday of the year, 2020. And I decided to keep this last Tuesday of the year for myself. As you guys know, each and every Tuesday night, I bring to you an exclusive interview with influential people from throughout the state of Connecticut. But tonight, I'm gonna make a couple of attempts. Uh, the first attempt I'm gonna, I'm gonna make is I'm gonna try to make this show uh, I would say a one-man show, uh, something I've never done before. Tonight, I'm planning on taking you guys for a little tour throughout the city of Bridgeport, throughout my neighborhood, right there in the east side of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Then, I'm going to take you guys on an exclusive tour of the Super Elite Entertainment Studio, which is right here behind me. And as you can see, here's our, matter of fact, let me show you guys. Exclusive, all right, exclusive. Super Elite Entertainment Studio, that's our sign, live on Facebook. We also live on Periscope, YouTube, on our website as www.supereliteentertainment.com. Uh, we are live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, but I'm debating if I'm going to change the time of the show until uh, 8 p.m. instead of 7 o'clock. Also, another thing I want to mention, when you come to the studio, keep in mind, it says it right here on the door, security notice. Security notice, no photos, no videos allowed inside the studio. Again, I'm gonna ask you guys to please share this live broadcast into your timeline, upload the link, send it to someone so that other people can join in and be a part of this broadcast. As you know, that is something that I do each and every week. That is my passion. That is something that I enjoy doing. It pumps through my veins. I love broadcasting from our studio right here in downtown Bridgeport, bringing you the best influential exclusive interviews from throughout the state of Connecticut. And we're not slowing down. We're going to continue pushing hard and pushing forward. I believe in 2021, there's going to be some great, great things coming to pass. You guys better get ready because Super Elite Entertainment is going to be taking off like never before. But with that said, I'm so excited, man, to, to bring you guys into the studio for a one-on-one -on -one tour. My studio is not big. It's not big at all. I have the studio part, and then I have a little office on the side where I do all of my editing and, and business deals in regards to keeping this uh, studio operating. But again, you guys, I'm really excited to have you here with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview. I'm going to be interviewed tonight. I'm going to be on the hot seat myself for the first time ever in the two years that I've been here in downtown Bridgeport. I'm going to be on the hot seat. I'm going to do my best to respond to questions uh, that you guys are going to throw at me in the timeline. I'm going to respond to questions that my um, uh, co-host is going to be asking me tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Sit back, enjoy, have a blast, have a drink, drink some tea, some coffee, and let's make this thing happen tonight. Thank you guys for the love and the support. Thank you for being with me throughout 2020, especially, I mean, listen, we're hitting two years now. So you guys have been supporting me, uh, tuning in each and every week for two years already, right? And um, if it's not for you, I would not be able to do what I do here in our studio on a weekly basis. If it's not for our advertisers, Aces, Bell Bonds, Spark City, Smoke and Vape, Perez Tire Center, Moran Insurance Agency, Bridgeport Auto Glass, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, Miranda and Sons Automotive, and so many others. I can't remember all the names right now off of the top of my head, but I truly, truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you guys who support me. Again, you guys, please share this live broadcast into your timeline, upload the link, send it to people that are in your friend list so that they can come and be a part of what we have going on here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. As you can see, we are an official exclusive studio. We're located right here in a, in a beautiful building in downtown Bridgeport that is serious business. It is not in a basement. I'm not in my garage. I'm right here in this beautiful building in downtown Bridgeport, across the street from the Bijou Theater, and also across the street from Murphy's Law. If you ever want to come down here to the studio for a tour, feel free. Contact me at www.supereliteentertainment.com or email me at jason at supereliteentertainment.com and we'll set it up. We'll have you come down here so that you can check out the studio for yourself. A lot of time, a lot of money has been invested into this studio. And um, listen, I've been here for two years and I've been having a 
blast. We're not gonna slow down. We're not gonna stop doing what we're doing. We're gonna continue pushing forward so that we can continue bringing you guys the best exclusive interviews from throughout the state of Connecticut. 2021, we're coming harder and stronger than ever before. So make sure that you guys get ready for what's to come in 2021. So you guys, with that said, let's go. Let's have a blast and let's make this thing happen. I hope you guys sit back and enjoy yourself and let's take this ride throughout the city of Bridgeport because I want to introduce you to the neighborhood where I come from. Sherman Street, Pembroke Street, East Main Street, and the east side of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Let's go. Boom. Welcome to Spark City Smoke and Vape located at 815 Lafayette Boulevard, Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we are here now in my actual neighborhood right here on Sherman Street in the east side of Bridgeport, Connecticut, right here on the intersection of Sherman and Gilmore Street. And then over here, we have Hoff Avenue, we have Sherman Circle, we have Steuben Street, we have all the different popular streets that if you grew up in this area, you should be familiar with. But so many great memories that took place here, as you can see, the condos that are behind me, that's where I used to live when I was a kid. Uh, my grandparents purchased that piece of property, a condo, uh, many, many years ago when actually when I was born, when I was discharged from the hospital, Park City Hospital, as an infant, this is where I was brought to live, right here on Sherman Street. Yes, I used to live in P.T. Barnum. Yes, I used to have a lot of family members who lived in Father Panic Village. But when I was born, this is where it all started for me, right here on Sherman Street. So many great memories growing up here, so many friends, so many, so many relationships. Uh, right down over here in this big greenhouse is where my uh, cousin Chris, little Chris, who used to be in a wheelchair, used to live at. Right here in Sherman Circle is where we used to uh, congregate. There used to be so many of us, man. There was no cell phones. There was no, you know, iPads. There was no computers during that time. There was any of that stuff. All we had was coming outside, congregating, and playing. We used to play kickball in Sherman Circle. Right over here was my school, which is called Waterville School. That's the school that I attended um, when I was a kid. Um, can't forget Marionville. Marionville's a, a popular little community that's also located right here in this area. And uh, man, I remember we used to play City Chase. We would dominate this whole area playing City Chase and tag and kickball and, and football. My best friend named Angel Rivera, Junito, used to live in this house, which is right over here to the side of me. Let me see if I can get that camera. Right over here, uh, my friend used to live uh, named Junito. He's someone that I truly, truly admire and his parents were really really good to me man because you know growing up here in the in the uh in the neighborhood um i didn't i didn't you know have parents uh my grandmother and my grandfather raised me but they were able to do but so much for me and uh you know so i always looked at my buddy Junito's parents um as role models and especially during those days that when we had no food in the house to eat all right you ever been there before no food in the house to eat i would go to his house to play with him 
But at the same time, what I really wanted was so that they can give me some food. I remember his mom would throw those pork chops, that rice and beans. She would throw all that good food on the uh, on the stove, and she, and, I, and I would always be sitting there just hoping that she would say, "Jason, you want some food? Absolutely, I want some food. Give me like four pork chops and uh and, and some rice and beans, please, because I'm starving." But yeah, this is my old neighborhood. So many great memories here. Great, great people have come out of this area, man. Um, beautiful families, great friends, people who are doing very, very well right now in their life. But yeah, you guys, I just wanted to give you a visual of where I was raised at, right here on Sherman Street, um, not far from Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop is actually right around the corner from here. Um, the other amazing thing is, is that right down the street, we also have what's called the river. The river is, uh, man, not that you think of it, it is like a waterfront property. You know, they didn't look at it that way back then, but we have a river that's right down the street over here. And I'm gonna show you guys um, after I get done here with you. And uh, right there in the river, we used to go down there, we used to snap bunkers, we used to fish for blues. And when it was freezing cold outside, like it is right now, I, uh, well not I, but all of us, meaning our crew of friends from this area, um, Augie and Moochie, my little cousin Chris, um, Israel and Junito and so many of us, my brother Ivan, we would go down to that river and uh, when it was freezing cold, we would run across that icy water like maniacs. We didn't even think twice about it. You couldn't pay me to do that now. But again, you guys, I hope you got a visual of where I was born and raised right here on Sherman Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you guys by Pueblo Supermarket, Pueblo Supermarket, which was my first job right here in Bridgeport, in the neighborhood, man, and I'm going to give you some more information on that, and uh, we're going to keep going. All right, you guys, so now I'm here in the east side of Bridgeport, Connecticut, in my old neighborhood. I'm right here on the corner of Pembroke and Nichols Street, and what you can see behind me is a, a small little bodega, which is called Pueblo Supermarket. That is where I actually had my very, very first job many many years ago i think i was like 15 got my first job at pueblo supermarket and i remember i worked there jeez i think i was doing like 60 hours a week i mean i was there all day and all night and for some reason the owner would never pay me and then eventually after being there working for a couple of weeks um he decided he was going to pay me so when he paid me he paid me in cash and he gave me like 75 dollars all in singles talk about getting ripped off but anyhow uh, that was my first job right here in the east side of Bridgeport at Pueblo Supermarket. I was the guy that used to work in the back of the store who was slicing the cold cut meat. So if you wanted some, you know, there used to be people, actually my own family members, they would come there and they would buy a dollar of ham and a dollar of cheese, you know, or a dollar of salami. And I would, you know, I'd be back there picando, uh, cutting the cold cuts for, uh, for the community. So that was my first job. I worked there for quite some time. Never was paid, but I gained great experience. Well. I was paid those $75 in singles um, after complaining to the owner. The owner's name was Sam, by the way. It wasn't the original owners uh, who found it, who initially opened the store, but it was Sam who brought the store from the original owners. And man, he was he was tough, man. The dude had me working there for hours and weeks and never would want to pay me. But anyhow, you know what? Those days are gone. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys. That's the first place where I ever worked right there at Pueblo Supermarket here in the east side of Bridgeport, Connecticut. All right, you guys, so there's no way in the world that I can come through my old neighborhood and not acknowledge one of the greatest pillars of this community that has changed countless lives. And that is the amazing, beautiful St. Mary's Church, which you see right there behind me beautiful beautiful church i remember growing up in this neighborhood man i i actually remember the original saint mary's church that used to be there and i remember when they demolished it and then they built this beautiful uh sanctuary which you can see right there behind me saint mary's church is an amazing pillar in the community so many people go there so many people have established their family and their faith uh they're based on the christian catholic beliefs and uh yeah man this is a beautiful beautiful property right here in the heart of the east side of bridgeport connecticut all right you guys so now i'm here at my old school as you can see right there it's called watersville watersville school right here in the east side of bridgeport 
great, great memories, man. Some good and some bad. But this is my school. I went here for pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way up to fourth grade. This is Waterville School. Now it's condemned, as you can see. There's not really much going on here. But I remember we used to uh, go in, going through the school. Right over here, this was the front door at one time. Really the side door, but this was the door we used to go in through. We used to line up. We used to go in through that door right there. It's pretty amazing that this building is still here standing. It's vacant. It's empty. God knows. God knows what's living in there right now. But this is my old school called Watersville. You can see Marionville community way out there in the background. Those yellow and white buildings back there that's Marionville and then right to the left of Marionville is my old church and this is the church I grew up in called Church of Christ Iglesia de Cristo our pastor used to be Heriberto Bonilla and you know most churches whether they're Latin churches Boricua churches Hispanic churches African American churches you know that most churches in the in the hood have church service every day. We have Bible study, children's church, warrior rangers. We had a kids club, Sunday school, Escuela Dominical. We have pretty much everything going on. We have outdoor service, indoor service. Um, yeah, but uh, I you know I thank my grandmother for for dragging me to church when I didn't want to come here and helping me i couldn't see it at that time but i thank her for for helping me to to build and to establish a christian foundation you know based on bibl biblical truths i barely could speak because it's, it's it's cold out here it's freezing cold my lips are numb so if i sound kind of funny i apologize but yeah I, I thank my grandmother for dragging me to church here beautiful church right there sanctuary church of christ iglesia de Cristo. Located right here on Hamilton Street in the east side of Bridgeport. So if you're ever in the area, stop by and check them out. They're a great church. Um, it's a Spanish, Spanish-speaking church, but I also believe that uh, they have interpreters. So come check them out. All right, you guys. So now I'm right down the street from my old house. Um, the following corner from Sherman Street and I mentioned that I was going to bring you guys down to see the uh, the river This was our waterfront. This was our waterfront. All right. This is the river where When it was freezing cold like it is right now, we would come down here and you know, we would skip rocks in the water and We would snack bunkers so that we could try to catch some bluefish. But at the same time when the water was frozen We used to come running across this water and not even think twice about it. We would just go for it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what we call the river, um, right down the street from my old house. Check it out, guys. All right, so as you can see, this is the river. And um, kind of dirty. It's kind of weird though, too, because there's something going on around here. There's a lot of dead fish down here right now. These are the bunkers, actually, that I used to that I mentioned a few times that I used to be out here snagging. Something must going on, something must be going on in the water because there's a lot of dead bunkers down here scattered all over the place. But this was our waterfront. This is the river. We would come down here and play. We would uh play city chase down here. We would play hide and seek. And uh like I said when that water right there was frozen, we would run across from one side to the other very very dangerous we didn't give a damn we just would go for it right underneath i-95 yep this is our waterfront all right guys so this is the hill that i'm talking about right underneath i-95 you see that this hill which is connected right to the sidewalk and then you're in the street we used to come down this hill on our bikes and honestly, I remember coming down this hill on my bike and I didn't even have brakes. So every time I came down this hill, you can see you end up right in the street. 
So we'll try to time it. You know, we'll try to look up the street this way. Then we will look up the street this way, make sure that there was no car coming. And then we will time it and we will come flying down. Shoo! And we will end up down here. All right, you guys, so now I am here at Martin Luther King Drive, one of the most dangerous places in the city of Bridgeport back in the days. This is where Father Panic Village used to be located. But now, after they knocked Father Panic Village down, years later, this is what's here now, this beautiful, beautiful complex. And right next door is this beautiful school, which you can see right there. I believe that school is called Marin. I might be wrong, but this street right here was one, one of the most dangerous streets in the city of Bridgeport. This used to be called the drive. And for you to come through the drive, you need a permission. You better know somebody. You, you can't just come driving through the drive on your own thinking that it's just something that you can do. I mean, this was extremely dangerous. They used to call this the jungle, uh, little New York City. A lot of homicides have taken place right here on this road. My dad lost his life right here on this street. And, um, you know, I was about nine, nine and a half years old. And my father was 27 years old. He was shot twice in the head right here on this street, um, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Back in the day, this was extremely dangerous. If you was here, it's because you knew someone. If you didn't know someone that lived here, or if you didn't live here yourself, you had no permission, no authorization to be coming through here. This. All right, you guys, we're gonna head back to the studio now at this time so we can continue on with our broadcast from the Super Elite Entertainment Studio located in downtown Bridgeport. Hi, welcome to Aces Bail Bonds. Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at Aces Bail Bonds, where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency. For fast, reliable bail bond service, get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call ACES Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. All right, you guys, welcome to Super Elite Entertainment Studio. Listen, I am so excited to have you guys here with me live tonight. Broadcasting from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, our small little studio has become a pillar in the community. So many people have been contacting me, uh, you know, reaching out to me through email and contacting me through Instagram and Facebook Messenger and etc. Um, sending me their information because they all want to come and be a guest on our hot seat. But as I promised you guys, I told you that this Tuesday, which is tonight right now, I'm going to take you for a behind the scenes uh, tour of our facility. I'm going to do my best to take you on a tour. Our studio is not big. I'll tell you right now, it's not big. We have this section where I'm in right now is the studio part. And then I have a little office on the side where I do all of my editing and business transactions. But I'm excited to have you guys here. I hope that you uh, you enjoy the behind the scenes um, exclusive uh, stuff that I'm going to share with you guys tonight. Now, first of all, I'm going to let you know right now, I'm not going to share all the secrets with you. I mean, I'm not that dumb. I'm not going to share all the secrets with you. But I'm going to show you what it's like from the moment you walk in the door as a guest. I want you to, to, to feel and to see that expression 
that someone gets when they first walk into the studio. This is my baby, this is something that I really love doing, and a lot of time, a lot of sweat, tears, and energy has been invested into creating this platform right here in the community for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this footage. I hope you enjoyed the tour of our studio. That is the very first time I'm ever doing something like this. So I'm just gonna show you how this thing works and how it operates, all right, you guys? So enjoy, let's go, let's have some fun. All right, you guys, so this is how it goes down when a guest arrives to the studio. As a host of the show, I myself personally like to go downstairs and meet the guests at the front door before they walk in and step into the elevator. Uh, I escort them up into uh, the elevator up into the third floor of our building, which is located right here in downtown Bridgeport, and I escort them all the way into the studio. And this is the impression that they get when they get here. The first thing they see is the sign, as I showed you in the beginning of the show. And it's funny, though, because a lot of people think that when they get invited to the show, they're going to be coming to my house. They think they're going to be, and I did start the show at my house, just saying. When I started the show, I did 10 episodes at home. And by the 11th episode, I was right here two years ago, right here um, in our current location. So people come here and, you know, it's funny because when they walk into the studio, their first impression is like, wow. Uh, you know, and then they tell me, I thought I was going into like a basement, a garage. I thought I was going to be going into into a dungeon. I didn't know what to expect. But when they see the studio and how much has been invested into it, people are taken back. And that is my goal. That is my agenda. So that when you arrive here as a guest, not only do you feel comfortable and at home, but I want you to be impressed with the, uh, you know, with, with the facility and the, the level of professionalism that we're providing as a business because my studio, our studio, Super Elite Entertainment Studio is a business now, all right? It's not a hobby. That is something I take serious. It's a business. I have to pay taxes, etc. cetera. You, you get what I'm saying? So here we go, you guys. Enjoy. This is what it's like, the first impression you get when you walk into the studio. Check it out. All right, you guys, so here we go. You are a guest and you are arriving at the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. So here is the impression you get when you first walk into our facility. And welcome to the Super Elite Entertainment Studio, you guys. Here it is behind the scenes. And I'm gonna give you a walk around, a walkthrough of everything that we have going on here. All right, here's that big screen that I'm always mentioning. It's about 200 inches, all right? Oh, and by the way, do you know who that is? That's Lola. That's Lola's designated living quarters. That's where Lola lives, right there in that spot. As you guys already know, I started off in the sport of boxing. I've dealt with and interviewed both of the individuals that you see there, Mayweather and Madonna. So boxing paraphernalia is all over the studio. So when you first arrive here as a guest, one of the things that I like the guests to feel comfortable with is when they walk in the door, the first thing that they see on this big 50 inch screen is a picture of themselves. Because I want, I want the, the guests to feel important. I want the guests to feel comfortable. So when you arrive here as a guest, one thing that you can expect is to see a picture of yourself on the screen. I have plenty of studio seating here, as you can see. I have other studio chairs here. We have lights all over the place. We have uh, a pretty unique uh, Wi-Fi network. Definitely important in order to be able to broadcast out of our facility. We have this beautiful lighting here. We have black lights. We have studio lighting, as you can see, all over the place. We have a monitor here, right? So when you walk in, that's the first thing you see is that beautiful logo that says Super Elite entertainment studio but let's keep going guys let's keep going on the tour of our facility all right so here we go as i said first thing you get greeted by is that beautiful picture of yourself and then you get to see also i need to mention oh i just bumped into something also the first thing you also see is that live on air sign right there as you know we are always live every tuesday nights at 7 p.m all right, so let's keep this thing going. Let's keep it going, show you a couple of other things. So, usually when a person gets here, you know, after they're like, oh, wow, you know, they're really impressed by the studio. So one of the things I like to do when a guest arrives at the studio, 
I like to escort them right here into the office area. The reason why I do that is because, as you can see, first of all, let me point out that amazing candle that's burning right there. That candle is always burning whenever we are broadcasting from the studio. That warm apple fragrance just, you know, blowing off into the air, man. It just sets the mood just right here at the studio. Um, that that projector that you see back there, I want to point that out really quick. That's a really, really old antique projector that was given to me by my grandfather uh, many years ago. He actually found that projector uh, while he was doing his job driving the, uh, the trash truck, the uh, garbage truck for the city of Bridgeport. So he found this projector out in the trash many years ago and he brought it home and then eventually it became mine. So now it's on display here at the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. Uh, but one of the things that I like to do is I like to bring the guests directly into this area. As you can see, um, I have refreshments for the guests. I have some nice candy. If you have a sweet tooth, I have cookies and I have snacks, all right? Coffee. Another thing that I like to have for the guests that come into the studio is fresh, cold refreshments. As you can see right here in our refrigerator, we have cold water, Gatorade, Powerade, all right, you guys? Also, notice no photos or videos allowed once you're inside the studio. But yeah, this is the uh, office area, as you guys can see microwave toaster this is where all the editing goes down at i get to watch the shows back right there on my desk matter of fact let me turn the light on so you guys can see the office a little bit better all right just looks nice when the light is off but here you go you guys so this is uh what the office section of the studio looks like all right another thing i wanted to point out to you guys because a lot of you guys don't know but i started off all of this work in the sport of boxing so i have a ton of my media credentials that i've gotten throughout the years from all the fights that i've covered uh this one right here is laura versus versus gosha berto versus porter let's see broner broner versus garcia danny jacobs uh, versus peter quillen uh charlo versus corabuff and then uh both charlo brothers fought that night it was pretty pretty nice uh, time to be there at the Barclays Center. The uh, Burials. Who else is on here? I got all kind of fights that I've covered. Deontay Wilder versus Buka. That was a really good fight. All right. Errol Spence versus Bundu. Jacobs and Arias. Let's see who else. Uh, Danny Garcia versus Porter. Brona versus Vargas. Oh my God, I've been to so many fights. I got uh, Wilder. Uh, versus Stavern. That was an epic fight. Oh, here's one of my media passes when Super Elite Boxing used to be around before we changed over into Super Elite Entertainment. Uh, but let's see who else. Let's see other fights. I got some big, big fights that I've been a part of. Oh, I just showed you guys that. Oh, this one right, right here, Spence versus Algeri. That was a good time as well. Spence versus Algeri. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's where I first got started in all of this. Uh, Crawford versus Lundy. That was a good fight at the uh, Madison Square Garden. Vendejo versus Silva. But, um, yeah, ya tu sabes, vive Puerto Rico. But yeah, that's where I first got started, you know, in the, in the sport of boxing. And then two years ago, I decided to open up the platform and to, um, you know, make it a community platform. All right, here's my business cards. Ah, oh, look who's there. Spark City Smoke and Vape. My buddy's, uh, business car as well but this is what the office of the studio looks like yep you see that boricua and that dominicano flag up there all right you guys so just giving you a quick tour of the super elite entertainment studio so right here is where i keep all the microphones that are used throughout the studio so that panel controls all the lights here in the studio. So if someone's gonna be here performing, I'm able to control all the lights here. Um, you know, flashy lights and and uh, I can't even think of the right words, but I have all kinds of different uh, club discotheque lights if you wanna call them. So if someone comes here to perform, and yes, you can perform here if you're an artist. Um, yep, I have some amazing lighting here that, um, that makes the uh, performance sticks out even more. As you can see, I have some Pretty cool speakers. Poke. 
Poke Audio speakers that sound really good here in the studio when the music is playing in the background. Um, also, you can see I have all of these different TV monitors, right? Of course, these are strictly for the advertisers who advertise on the Super Elite Entertainment Network. You know, it's funny because there's a lot of people who who watch the show and they think that um, these screens that show all our advertisers, a lot of people think that this is all fake screens and it's green screen and stuff like that that I use. But no, these are real screens um, that I use here in the studio, you guys. It is not green screen. Everything is official. Everything is authentic and legit. But as you can see, I'm gonna touch it just so you can believe what I'm saying. Here's the screen, all right? These are real screens, guys, real screens all over the place, all right? So let's keep going. Let's keep going. I have so much going on. So this is what it's like when you arrive in the studio. All right, so check it out. This right here, that's the hot seat. In case if you don't know, that is the hot seat. So if you come here as a guest, that's where you're gonna be sitting at, right there on that white leather seat. Then that's my seat right there. As you can see, all the controls. That is the stuff you don't get to see when I'm live on the show. That's all the controls. And another thing that people don't know is that I'm a one-man team. So everything that goes on here in the studio, it goes on um, based on what it is that I do. Um, I control everything. I'm the sound tech. I'm the, the videographer. I'm you know the host of the show. I'm, I'm conducting the interview. Um, I have a lot going on. So... Throughout every interview that you see that I do on Tuesday nights, I'm conducting an interview, I'm asking questions while the person responding to that question, I'm preparing myself mentally for the next question, but at the same time, I'm controlling everything that is going on here. I'm making sure that the sound is working properly. And yeah, we do run into technical difficulties at time, but I'm doing my best to control the sound. I'm watching the visual, um, the, uh, the uh, you know, what's going out into the uh into the network that you guys get to see on the other end of the line so you know i i wear a lot of hats here i wear a lot of hats here i'm a one-man team i don't have anyone here that works with me in the studio i do it all i control it all i edit everything i capture all the footage um whether it's something that's done here in the studio or, or out of the studio because i do cover different events and um, i do produ uh, produce commercials and and do different things for different clients so whether it's being done here in the studio or outside of the studio, I'm a one-man team. I do it all myself. I do it all myself. So sometimes it can, be, it can become a little bit complicated. Sometimes it can become a little hard. But let's keep going with the tour, guys. Let's keep going. So from a guest view, when you sit down on the hot seat, this is the view you get when you're on the hot seat. Okay, guys? This is the view that the guest gets, which is pretty cool. Um, they get to see their picture. They get to see the, the screen on the left, what I, which I'm gonna explain momentarily. And then you get to see the screen on the right. They get to see all of these controls right here that you guys at home don't get to see until tonight. All right, there's a lot of monitors, a lot of TVs in here. This is my seat. When I sit down and I'm getting ready to start the show, this is exactly what I'm looking at. I have all of these monitors, the guests sitting right here to my left. I'm sitting right here on this seat and I'm controlling all of these monitors. I'm controlling all of this stuff that you can see right here. Uh, my Terra Deck unit, I'm controlling all of these different iPads that I have all over the place. You understand? So um, the unique thing about it is that when I am live, this is the actual live footage in the studio. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So that's the live footage. That's us right now in the studio. As you can see, I'm waving at you guys. Hola, como esta? Todo está bien? All right. So we get to see exactly what's on the screens um, on that monitor right there when we're in the studio, we're broadcasting live. So this right here, I'm going to change the camera angle. That angle right there is the guest seat. All right. That's the guest seat right there. The guest always has two camera angles. I always give the guests two camera angles. And then that's us all together right here, uh, me and the guests. As you can see, this is the hot seat. I'm sitting on my seat, which is a hot seat itself. And then way up top, I have all of these amazing, bright, beautiful lights that's just flashing down upon us, uh, which is pretty cool, you guys, all right? So let's put that back there so you can see. Now, when we're live on the show, Right, we're live on the show. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment. 
we are monitoring everything that's going on right there to that screen on the right. That's the screen that allows us to see everything that's going on on Facebook. And also I get to see everything that's going on on Facebook right here on this iPad. And I can see all the comments that all of you guys are leaving in the timeline right there. And you see, I can read all the comments that you guys are leaving um, in the timeline. But right here, this monitor right here allows me to monitor the sound and also the visual. So as long as everything is going correctly on this monitor right here, then that tells me that everything is going correctly out there for the viewing audience, right? This um, laptop is how I control the whole entire network with this as a, as a backup. So both of these iPad and laptop work together. This is my whole network, as you guys can see. You know, I get a lot of people, let me fix this real quick. So I get a lot of people who's always contacting me, hey, what service do you use? What software do you use? You know, the best thing I can tell you and what I can recommend is for you to go onto terradeck.com website and look at all the different types of, of gadgets and broadcasting tools that they have on there, but that's what I use. And um, you can also use their software that's available um, on, their, on their website, which is actually free. Their software is free. I use the software and that's how I make all of this magic happen here in the studio. Um, so yeah, go on to terradeck.com and you can be able to get in some information as to how you can, you know, have your own broadcast, you guys. But yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into everything that you see going on here. This is where I control all the music in the studio. And let me show you what I'm talking about right now. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let me turn that off because I want to show you guys. So let me give you an example. So like when I'm doing, um, the show called Praying With Music and, and, and we're playing all the different music in the studio. This is how it goes down. Actually, you know what? Let me go from the beginning. So I'm starting off the show and I'm getting ready. So first of all, I want you to know that before I start each and every show, I am extremely, extremely nervous. I don't know what it is. I don't care how long I've been doing this for years already. Right before I hit that go live button at 7 p.m., you know, the guest is sitting here and the guest is always nervous. The bright lights are on us, but I'm nervous just as the guest is. So I always got to close my eyes. I always got to, you know, <laughs> shake myself and, and throw a few punches to prepare myself mentally um, to go live and be able to do the show. So let me show you what I'm talking about, how it starts off when I get ready to go live on the show. When I get ready to go live on the show, as I stated, I control everything that is taking place. Every single thing that's going on in the studio, I'm controlling. So as you guys are out there watching, here we go. We go live right there. So I get to hear, right? I get to hear everything in the studio. Then we drop that in. Welcome to live with Jason Rodriguez. So I'm monitoring each and everything, make sure everything is flowing. Commercials. Are you in your hands? And then Morant Insurance Agency, we are here to protect your future. Come on guys, join me. Let me show you around. All right, so you can see how much work goes into this. I mean, I'm controlling everything. I'm conducting an interview. And I'm making sure that everything is flowing accordingly. But I mentioned um, Praying With Music that I do. Well, I was doing it on Thursdays and then I put a stop to it for a little while. But that's going to be coming back and it's going to be called Winter Worship. So as you can see right here, when I'm getting ready to play the song, I just drop it. Boom. And... So I'm listening to the music. I'm watching the video. We're worshiping right inside the studio with you. So as it's playing, I'm right here with you. I'm listening, I'm watching, and I'm worshiping alongside you. Remember that. I tell you that song right there will put you on your knees but yeah man well, i have a whole lot going on here in the studio that is my baby man when i say that is my baby i mean that's my baby i love this i love broadcasting i love doing what i do you guys so if you know someone that should be coming out to the studio and sitting right here on the hot seat right beside me for an exclusive interview please man reach out to me send me their information i would love to bring them here into the studio if they're an artist let me show you what i'm talking about let me let me drop some music in here real quick for you guys here we go here we go here we go 
Here we go. If they're an artist, they could come here. Let me get the mic. Let's see if it's working. Shit, shit. One, two, one, two. Let's go. Eight. Eight. What? What? As you know, each and every Tuesday night, we coming at you live from Super Elite Entertainment Studio right here in downtown Bridgeport. Can you sing? Can you rap? Can you spit? Come here on the house. Let's go! <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Uh, uh. I can't rap, but I can talk. I can't, I can't, I can't. You know what? I can dance. Hey, y'all in. Come on, guys. So listen, this microphone is right here, waiting for you to come to our studio so that you can perform live on our show. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. All you're gonna get is a uh, opportunity where a lot of people are gonna see you perform on our platform. So come on down, be a part of what we have going on here at Super Elite Entertainment Studio in downtown Bridgeport. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez, breaking it to you live each and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Let's go, hey, 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 hey. Stop, let me stop, let me stop. <laughs> All right, you guys. So let's keep going with the tour. A couple other things I'm going to show you guys. So hold on. Let's show see. you guys. As you can see, yes, those are my cameras. Those are my cameras. That's how, how I control the show. Those are my angles. All right. There is a whole network that I had to come up with. I used to have the big, big cameras here in the studio. But my space is limited, so I had to come up with an idea. So I created this whole network that I use here in order to be able to broadcast, all right? I can have six cameras, I can have 10 cameras, I can have as many cameras as I want. But for right now, all I'm working with and all I need is four cameras to be able to produce the content that I'm producing each and every Tuesday nights here from our studio. As you can see, there's our projector, huh? Then it projects right there onto that wall. I believe I already pointed it out, but this is Lola. You guys remember Lola, right? Lola's the one who opened the show. She's my co-host. Every now and then Lola comes onto the show. Well, there she is. That's her designated living quarters. That's where Lola lives, right there um, in the corner of the studio. She is on display and she just loves being on display so that when guests walk into the studio, she can greet them with that beautiful, beautiful, Smile. Come on, Talola. Look at so sexy girl. Look at you. All right. But I'm gonna see it. We got all these beautiful lights. Huh? And um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. You know, I try to keep it real. I try to keep it um, positive at, at all times. And as you can see, we also have our own C Super Elite Entertainment drinking mugs. All right, you guys, so it's been fun. I hope you had a blast uh, coming on a quick little tour of our studio. I know I had a blast taking you on a tour, so here you go. One last go around. Hey, welcome, 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 welcome to Live with Jason Rodriguez at the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. Don't you go anywhere.
welcome back to Super Elite Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are going to have an exclusive performance by no other than Scrappy Doo! Hi everyone, I'm Scrappy Doo! <laughs> and I'm so excited to be here on the Super Elite Entertainment show tonight. And I'm getting ready to sing you guys an amazing song. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. It's going to be awesome. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all ready? Yo 
So what's up my people? How y'all hanging out there? I hope you enjoyed the show this this far. Hey, 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 hey! Alright, let me relax. I did I did I did enough of the dancing today. I did enough of the dancing tonight. So what's up you guys? Welcome to Super League Entertainment. I'm your host Jason Rodriguez, broadcasting from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm here live in the studio. We've been going for about a good hour already. I took you guys on a tour of my neighborhood right there on Sherman Street, Nickel Street, Hoff Avenue. Um, throughout the east side and then I took you guys um, on a tour of our facility our studio Which is right here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut the super elite entertainment studio Which is located right here in downtown Bridgeport. You see Lola doing her thing. Lola's so sexy I, I tell you every time I see Lola perform every time she opens her mouth She just she does something to me on the inside and then you see scrappy do yo scrappy Doo's my boy He grew up with me right there on East Main Street in the hood you know what I mean? Uh, what I, what, so what I'm trying to do for Scrappy Do is I gave him a little jobby job here in the studio. He shows up, he does a little bit of cleaning, and um, I decided to give him an opportunity to showcase his skill. Yo, the dude can spit, he can rap. Scrappy Do! So what's up with you guys out there, man? How's everything going? I'm looking at the timeline right now. I see all of you guys been watching for the past hour. I've been watching right here with you, and um, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. So this is the part, the portion of the show where you can ask me any question you like. I do have some questions. Let me take a sip of water. <coughs> I do have some questions that a whole bunch of people sent to me um, by email and also through Messenger. Um, I have about 25 questions on here. All right. So let me just say this really quick. Um, I did indicate in the beginning of the show that I was going to have a co-host here with me asking me questions, interviewing me. Um, I decided not to do that. I decided not to do that. I decided to just read the questions that people sent to me and I'll answer the questions accordingly if I'm able to answer them. Um, I'm also, so I have questions right here with me. Also, I want to respond to the questions that anybody might be having for me that's watching live right now on the timeline, you guys. So if you have a question for me, right now is your opportunity. Ask me any question <coughs> that you might have for me. Um, hopefully I can answer it. Don't be trying to ask me no crazy stuff now. 
that is a PG show or a rated G show, not rated R, not triple X. All right. So ask me any question you like, and hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions accordingly. I hope you guys are having a good day out there. I hope you're having a blast. I know I've been having a blast the whole time. All the footage that you was watching, man, I was sitting back right here just watching it along with you, and I've been having a blast. So we have our first question, actually by my cousin, Lisa Ortiz, who's watching way out there in Florida. She's asking, we, when, no wait, we just getting started. Oh, I thought that was a question, my bad. I thought she was asking me, when did you get started? But anyhow, I'm going to run with that. First question, when did I get started? As I stated in the uh, beginning of the show, <clears throat> I got started in the sport of boxing. And then, like two years ago, what was going on was that I was at home and I was cleaning my game room. I was cleaning my game room at home. And what happened was that I was, you know, so I was my pool table, my foosball table, and I have this whole display there. So when I was cleaning downstairs in my game room, I took a I took a, a, a look at this display that I have there and I said, hmm, I just caught a, a, a thought. It was like an instant thought I caught in my head. And I said, you know what? Let me go and get my two studio chairs that I have. And I set them up. I took a picture. I looked at the picture and I said, oh, wow, wait a minute. I'm on to something here. Then I went and I got a whole bunch of boxing gloves and pictures that I've taken with a whole bunch of different boxers. And I set it all up. And then my intention was, you know what? I'm going to start a boxing show. And that was my initial initial uh, intention was when I created this show was it was supposed to be called Super Elite Boxing Show. So after I did two shows, I decided, you know what? I'm going to change the whole name. I'm going to remove Super Elite. Well, I'm going to remove the boxing part and I'm going to call it Super Elite Entertainment. So now it's called Super Elite Entertainment LLC. This is a LLC. This is a business now. And the reason why it's a business is because I have advertisers, um, as you can see on the screens behind me, who support me. I also have um, clients and people that I, I produce content for. So, you know, revenue comes in. You got to pay Mr. Taxman. All right. So that's why I have a, a, a tax ID number as well. So this is a legitimate business. This is not some you know, some uh, um, hobby that I'm working on here inside the studio. There is a real studio right here in downtown Bridgeport, as you've seen in the tour. So how did I get started? I just stated to you, I started at home. I did 10 episodes at home. And by the 11th show, I ended up right here in downtown Bridgeport, across the street from where the Bijou Theater is and also um, Murphy's Law. I'm right here on the third floor. That is our studio. A lot of money has been invested into the studio. And my goal is to, you know, my initial goal was to create a platform for the community where people from the community can come and showcase who they are, showcase their ability, showcase their talent. That's why I have this studio right here. That's why I, um, I created this studio so that you can come here to our, our facility and showcase who you are. All right, you guys. So I hope you're having a good time out there so far on the show. I'm looking at the uh, timeline right here. Let's see what else we have. Did you cry when... <laughs> All right, that's a good question. Did I cry when I got my tattoos? Um, No, I didn't cry when I got my tattoos. But I did get my tattoos both at the same time. And as you, you know, if you've seen in pictures, my, my tattoos go from here up to here on both arms. So when I got my tattoos, I stood like this, and they did them both at the same time. Did it hurt? It hurt intensively. It was uh, a lot of pain. But I didn't cry. I didn't cry. Um, Let's see here. What is your greatest accomplishment so far? You know, it's funny, Giovanni, that you asked me about that question right there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate your question to what is my, my greatest episode, my greatest show that I feel I've had. I've been here two years, and in two years, for 24 months, I've been doing this show every Tuesday night for two years, faithfully, haven't taken any time off. Actually, I did take one Tuesday off, and that's when my brother Ivan Rodriguez passed away. Um, this year, a couple of months ago, I took that one Tuesday off. Um, but I've been doing this show every Tuesday night for two years already. And I've had countless influential people from throughout the state of Connecticut right here on my hot seat. But one of the shows that I admired the most, one of the shows that I really, really enjoyed the most, and I, I consider, consider it a great accomplishment, was actually Giovanni. And it's funny you threw that question at me because the show that I admired the most was the episode I did with you about two weeks ago. Um, I loved having you here on the hot seat. Um, your story, 
um, is powerful, you're inspirational, you're influential, and, and I just love your accomplishments. I love how you came from Puerto Rico, living in, in, a, in a shed on a baseball field with your mother uh, for two or three years. You lived in a shed. You bathed yourself with a water hose, and you were able to feed your mother through the money you were getting from the coaches who were coaching the teams because you helped them prep the field for the games. And, you know, in secret, you lived in that shed for three years and really no one knew about it. You know, and having you here in my studio on my hot seat and your willingness to share your story a couple of weeks ago with my viewing audience is one of my greatest accomplishments. I love that episode. I love that show. And I love your story, Giovanni Alvarez. So thank you so much for asking that question. Let's see who else. Uh, Janet, uh, Janet Falcone is saying saludos. Saludos right back at you. Let's see here. Hello, Linda. Okay. Oh, <laughs> who's your favorite cousin? Oh, man, I have so many cousins. So many cousins. I have my cousin, Little Chris, who passed away. Uh, Little Chris was, he was probably one of my favorite cousins. We were always together. We did a lot of good and a lot of bad. We did a lot of dirt together, me and Little Chris. Uh, but she's saying my cousin, Michelle George, way out there in Florida, is saying, who's your favorite cousin? All right, you're my favorite cousin. Even though, even though we used to fight back in the day, we used to fist fight over candy, over, uh, uh, you know, blow pops, over those Cheetos and those 25 cent juices that we used to buy up Pueblos. And, um, you know, you didn't want to give me a sip. So I used to, you know, get into a fist fight with you. And then I would snatch it out of your hand and get the last little sip that was left in the uh, in the juice after it hit the ground from us, you know, banging it out over that juice. But um, <laughs> my cousin, uh, Michelle George, way out there in Florida, you're my favorite cousin. All right. So let's see who else. Uh, any other questions? We uh, Who caught it when they won the Monopoly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you already know. That's how it was back then. We were growing up. We, you know, we'll, we'll be playing Monopoly in the game. It, it always started off, um, you know, it was a healthy game. It was, it was a healthy environment when the game would always start. It. I had to be the car. I didn't want to be anything else. I wasn't the dog. I wasn't the shoe, the boot. I wasn't, you know, the uh, what else? The hat. I wanted to be the car. Always wanted to be the car. And um, if someone grabbed that car before me. It was on and popping in the house. Monopoly game would get torn to pieces. The money was, I mean, was thrown all over the, all over the place, and um, there was nobody was playing that game unless I got the car. All right. Let's see who else. Um. <laughs> all right. Come on. Somebody asked me some more questions. What made you change your life to go? Oh, so Christina Diaz is saying, what made you change your life to go into college and give your life to God? Amazing, amazing question. I wish I was able to elaborate in detail to your to uh, to your question, but that's a tough one to answer. But I'll tell you one thing. Um, the reason why I went to college is because I was a young parent, all right? For, for, for most of you guys who don't know, by the time I was 14, I already had a son with a 13-year-old girl named Michelle. So... You know, by the time I was 14, I already was a parent. By the time I was 16, 17, 15, 16, 17, I was a straight up dropout out of school. Um, I made it as far as, I think I made it to fifth grade. I made it to fifth grade. I never seen sixth, seventh, and eighth. They kicked me out of school and they put me into alternative school. Uh, because, uh, let me just put this down. They put me into um, alternative school because I was a bad kid right here. In the city of Bridgeport, I went to Blackham. I went to uh, Eastside Middle. I went to, oh my God, what other schools? I went to Blackham, Eastside Middle, John Winthrop, Watersville. I went, uh, I went to pretty much every school that's available in the city of Bridgeport. So, um, yeah, so I was a parent, dropped out of school. By the time, like I said, 16, 17, 18, I was just a straight up dropout. Then I decided to go back to school because I was like, all right, you know what? I got to make some changes. Went back to school. Went to Harding High School. I was there for ninth grade. So I got skipped. I never met, like I said, never went to sixth, seventh, and eighth. I got skipped directly to ninth grade. When I got to ninth grade, you know, um, things didn't get better for me. You would think that things would get better for me, but they didn't. Um, I went to Harding High School. I tried, you know, I showed up. It's kind of crazy though, because when I would show up for school, I used to show up because I was hungry. The truth be told, you know, we really didn't have food in the house as a kid now, as a younger kid. I used, I used to show up to school to get that. Remember that little square pizza? That pizza was always banging. And I remember they would give that little 
ice cream that was like a like a triangle ice cream. So I remember when they would give that that pizza with the ice cream, I'll be I'll be yo, you want this ice cream for your pizza? I try to get me another slice, and somebody always bit the bullet and always gave me their pizza for that ice cream. But yeah, I went to uh, Harding High School. I was there up until I got kicked out of Harding High School. Ended up going to Central Night School. Got my GED. That's right. I never graduated high school, guys. I got a GED. And you already know what they call that. Good enough diploma. I got a GED. After I, grad um, after I graduated high school with that GED is when I made some drastic changes in my life. I went to Housatonic Community College. I got my... Uh, I went to Housatonic Community College. I got my associate's degree in criminal justice. From there, I went to um, University of Bridgeport, and I was able to get my bachelor's degree in social work. So I have two degrees. It took me six long years to get those two degrees. But you know what? Thank be to God that I was able to go to school, and um, I, I, you know, I took it serious. I, actually, I'll tell you why I really took school serious. When I went to went to college, when I went to college, I took it serious because I was paying right out of my pocket. I, I didn't have no financial aid. I was paying right out of my pocket. So that's why to school, serious. All right, so let's see. Any other questions? Um, Monopoly. All right, your favorite cousin. Yep, I already said that one. Left while I thought you were bad. <laughs> um, all right, so I don't see any other questions that are on there right now. So I'm going to go with questions that some of you guys sent me by email and through Messenger. So it says here, uh, did you specialize? Do you have specialized training? Or education in the field of broadcasting good question I absolutely do not have any specialized training at all I never went to school for broadcasting I, I never went to school for journalism I never went to IT school I never went to school to learn any of this stuff that I that I do here in our studio uh, did this firsthand um, knowledge firsthand experience I learned it by trial and error I just jumped in there and you know made a lot of mistakes a lot of failures but I learned it the hard way. I learned it the hard way, you guys. And I'm getting a little feedback. Um, but I, yeah, I learned it the hard way. Uh, no one basically taught me what I know. I learned it on my own. I learned it on my own, you guys. All right? So that's how I got started in broadcasting. Broadcasting, as we know, is a very lucrative thing right now, especially in 2020. And the reason why it's so lucrative is because of the pandemic, COVID-19, as you guys can see. Everyone is broadcasting now. Zoom has exploded. Um, there's also other different uh, apps out there and, and software out there that's similar to Zoom. And, you know, I mean, uh, broadcasting has just uh, revolutionized our, our society. Uh, uh, everyone broadcasts now. All right. So let's go with another question here. You have a full time job as well. Why did you start Super Elite Entertainment? Good question. Um, good question. Yes, I do have a full time job. I work each and every day. I've been working all my life. And for you guys who don't know, I work for the Department of Corrections last 13 years. I am currently a parole officer. Don't get scared and be like, ooh, he's the popo. All right, relax. I'm not coming to your house. I'm not kicking the door down. I'm not coming to get you. Relax. All right, guys? But yeah, I do have a job. All right? This is my job right here in the studio. And I have a job out there, a regular job out there, just like anyone else does. So, you know, I wear multiple hats. I make it all happen. I juggle a lot of things. And um, I make it happen, guys. I make it happen. So let's see. Let's. Anybody else throw me any questions in the timeline? One more one more Okay. You are so full of energy and passion. But what keeps you so motivated? I like that question, Ron, Wanda Flores. Really like that question. What keeps me motivated? First of all, I am full of energy. As you can see, I'm, I'm animated. I've been electrical. In Spanish, it, uh, how could I say? Electrical, electrifying. I've been electrical all my life. I remember back in the day, my grandmother would always tell me, calmate, you know, relax, take it easy. I was a hyper dude, and I'm still kind of hyper. You can't calm me down when I get going. Um, but, you know, um, I, I do have a lot of energy, and I do have a lot of passion for what I do. And the reason why I have a lot of passion for what I do here in the studio it's because I love doing what I do. You know, some people go to school to learn certain things. I didn't go to school to learn this. I believe I was born with this gift, with this trait, with this ability to communicate and, and to broadcast and, and to, you know, and to, and to communicate to, to, you know, like right now I'm sitting here alone in the studio, but I'm communicating with you. And I believe this is what I was born for, to speak and to effectively communicate to a viewing audience. All right. And then... To complete your question, uh, Wanda, you say you you asked me what keeps you motivated. What keeps me motivated is the uh, 
the change that I see taking place in, in people's lives who come into our studio. I love when someone comes into our studio um, who hasn't gotten an opportunity anywhere else to showcase themselves. And I'm going to give you a good example, a primary example. Edward Figueroa, the addiction killer, right, came into my studio twice, two different occasions, sat right here on the hot seat. We talked about his career, we talked about his life, we talked about where he comes from, and he comes from the movie industry, he's a movie producer, he's a writer, he writes music, he writes scripts, uh, he does all that stuff in the entertainment industry. Walked away from all that because he wanted to save lives, and he became what's called the addiction killer. He came here to my studio, Edward Figueroa, sat on the hot seat, we did an interview, that interview landed him countless opportunities. He was able to open up a, a uh, substance abuse um, program which is right here on clinton avenue in bridgeport connecticut not only that but this little studio this little broadcast gained him opportunity to be on news 12 uh channel 8 news and so many other different platforms out there um because it all started right here on this show all right so you know that that's where my passion comes from seeing people who come here leave here and do better than the day they arrive here all right so that's that's my passion on the show. Let's see what else. Any other questions? Go hello, gonna take it easy. <laughs> Giovanni Alvarez is saying, Go hello, gonna take it easy. Yeah, I think I better slow it down, right? All right, so how old do you how old were you the first time you went to church? Excellent question. Excellent question. Hold on, I gotta put some music on here really quick before I answer that question for you guys. Uh here we go. Boom. All right, so. Who was it that asked that question? Sorry, I got distracted. Lisette Diaz is saying, how old were you the first time you went to church? First time I went to church, I think it was uh, the day I was pushed out of my mother's womb, <laughs> basically. I went to Church of Christ. I grew up in Church of Christ, and I talked about it a little bit in the beginning of the show. Um, I grew up in Church of Christ on Hamilton Street. I went to... Uh, Sunday school I went to I was in the Royal Rangers any of you remember the Royal Rangers out there the girls had the missionettes oh my god we went to church every day whether it was church indoor or outdoor whether it was a campaña a revival we were just always in church you know Monday nights were prayer night Tuesday nights were pennies for heaven um, uh, uh, Wednesday nights was deacon night Thursday nights were uh, uh, Bible study Friday nights was revival service. Saturday was just show up at church night. And then Sundays, you better be at church because you, it started off with Sunday school. Then we had Sunday service. And then we would go down to the to the bottom of the church and we'll have actividades where, you know, they were selling potato balls and acapurias and, and relleno de papas and all that good stuff. And then we would go home for about maybe 30 minutes and then come right back to church for Sunday night service. So, man, listen, I grew up in church. I was in church pretty much all my life. and uh, But I think my grandmother, Adela Coriano, who dragged me to church, um, you know, if it had not been for her, I wouldn't have a Christian uh, foundation. I wouldn't have faith. I wouldn't believe in, you know, and we all have different faiths. You know, I, I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Some of you believe in Allah. Some of you are five percenters. Some of you are Jehovah Witness. Some of you are Catholic. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, as long as we have a faith in in a, in a great you know in God someone that's greater than us that can help us in our time of need that's all that matters guys that's all that matters so let's see any other questions any other questions I'm already uh Church of Christ yep it said Diaz you already know that's some real right there all day all right so let's keep going because nobody's asking me questions in the timeline I have other other questions that people sent me all right it says here how do you find interviewees good question somebody asked me how do I find people to interview on the show so when i first started off the show when i first started i was chasing people down you know sending people messages and emails and calling people and I, I was chasing people down two years ago when i first started this show now you know we've gotten to the point where you know thank be the guy that i really don't have to chase people down people reach out to me people send me emails they send me direct messages um they go onto our website at supereliteentertainment.com and they send me their information I get that information, I put it, you know, um, in this pad that I have, and, and I keep track of who's scheduled for the show and and what dates are available, and then eventually at some point. So if you're one of those who sent me your information and you haven't heard from me yet, 
um, and, and it's been like a month or two, don't worry, I'm going to get to you. You are listed on my pad. I will be getting to you soon to schedule you for, for an interview, all right, you guys? But the best way to uh, to get on to the show is to reach out to me through email, jason at supereliteentertainment.com or go onto our website at supereliteentertainment.com and right there on the contact link, just go on there, send me your information and I'll get back to you, all right? Let's see, any other questions? No questions? All right, there's people still there watching the show with me. I truly appreciate you guys for watching. Let's go, I'm getting ready to wind down. Uh, is it helpful to is it helpful to have humor on the show absolutely humor is extremely helpful um especially when i bring guests into the show you know sometimes guests come into the show and and, and they're a little nervous and and they have you know high anxiety especially when they sit on the seat and all the lights go on and and the and and i'm telling the, the guests all right we're getting ready to start the show you know five ten you know ten countdown starts and you know and i can see the guests you know a little sweat coming down on the side of their head um but yeah humor is important i try to use as, as much humor as possible i try to make the guests um laugh i try to make you guys laugh sometimes maybe i'm not that funny sometimes i come across maybe a little uh, you know like i'm at work <laughs> you know what i mean but um but yeah I, I try to utilize humor as much as possible because humor uh changes the whole environment here in the studio all right Let's see. Any other questions on here? When are when are you going to have Benny Gonzalez? Good question. Benny Gonzalez, bachata artist Benny Gonzalez will actually be here in the studio next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I believe that's uh, January fifth. Benny Gonzalez is going to make the commute. He's about he's about three hours away. He's making the commute. He's coming down here, and he's going to be right here live with me in the studio on the hot seat. And I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure that I get Benny Gonzalez to sing a couple of songs if if he's willing to. But I'm excited to have Benny Gonzalez coming down here to the studio next week, Tuesday, January 5th. He'll be here on the hot seat, and uh, he's going to be staying right here in Bridgeport. And um, you know, we're going to go out and have some some dinner. We're going to have a blast, man. So Benny, get ready, brother, because we're going to have a blast next Tuesday night. All right. Any other questions on the timeline? No questions on the timeline. Let's keep going. So it says here, where did you learn how to set up your studio, lighting, equipment, and all that? Like I stated in the beginning of the show, I pretty much just learned it all on my own. Um, YouTube definitely helps. I'm not even going to sit here and pretend. There were some things I couldn't understand, some things I couldn't comprehend and get together. But YouTube is it is a, a great, amazing solution. So, yeah, you know, I utilize YouTube. I utilize trial and error and failure and i kept failing until i got it right and now pretty much this studio flows and operates itself you guys all right um let's see any other questions on here um is it help yep what's uh what's next for you what are your future goals good question what's next for me what are my future goals uh what's next for me is i'm about to get hired by abc cbs or one of those big networks i'm just joking I'm just joking. It would be nice. Um, but what's next is, um, uh, you know, I, I got some plans. I got some plans in mind where I want to expand the studio. I want to do some, you know, do this on a, on a bigger scale, on a big, uh, at a higher level. So I've been looking around for the past couple of months for maybe a bigger location. You know, if I could find something right here um, where I'm already currently located, maybe I can, uh, I can do something here um, where I'm at. You know, so I can expand. I want to create some more um, little uh, setups like this, little studios like this. I want to uh, finish creating the ultimate platinum podcast room, and also I want to create a store where you know where we're selling all kind of super elite entertainment merch paraphernalia. So I got a lot of thoughts running through my head, a lot of plans, um, a lot of things that I'm looking to uh, to bring to pass, you guys. Um, but let's see. I'm starting to wind down. Oh, there go Benny Gonzalez right there on the check-in. Um, I see you, Benny. You better be ready for next Tuesday, Benny. I see my niece Raquel is saying hi, Uncle Jay. Oh no, that's not my niece Raquel. It's my nephew. Uh, Maddox is watching. Maddox, how you doing, Maddox? Uh, I I I didn't forget about you. Uh, Maddox is my uh my hangout my hangout partner. Uh, you know. I'm gonna, you know, he hangs out with me in the, in the warm weather. We take rides in my RX-7. Uh, we swim in my pool at home. Maddox is the man. If you don't know Maddox, look him up. Look up Maddox, man. Maddox is the man. Uh, so let's see. Lissette Diaz is saying, was your dream 
to be broadcasting in future before boxing. I can't really say that uh, that it was my dream to be broadcasting. Um, it has be become my dream. And you know, just like in life, sometimes you don't you, you try your hand at a lot of different things. And I've done a lot of different things. A lot of you guys don't know. I used to DJ back in the day. All right, I used to be called DJ Rod. Um, yeah, I used to DJ. What else did I do? Oh my God, I've done so many different things. Um, but eventually, you know, and I, as you guys know, I did boxing. I interviewed so many different boxers. And um, but eventually, I came to the point where I realized, you know what? My passion is to to broadcast and, and to conduct interviews and, and to do exactly what it is that I'm doing right now. That is my passion. All right, Lisette Diaz. That question was for, from Lisette Diaz. Yup, Maddox is only nine years old. Maddox is the man. Victor Negro, my cousin, I see you watching on the check-in. Saying right here, what's up, cuz? Um, let's see, did I miss any other? Oh, Janice Tavares is saying, you've accomplished so much in two years. What's your vision? next for you and C. I think I sort of kind of responded to that um, just now where I, I stated that I want to expand, I want to grow, and I want to do things at a, at a bigger level. The reason why I want to expand is because, you know, I want to provide an opportunity for other people in the community to come here to the studio so that they can have their own show. You can rent some airtime, you can come here, you can do what I'm doing, you can have your own show. All right, you guys? Um, you can have your own podcast. <clears throat> That's why I want to create the ultimate podcast room. You know, people in the community, you can come here, you can have your, your own podcast. If you have a church, if you're a pastor and you want to, uh, um, you know, uh, um, if you want to uh, broadcast your, your service, I mean, you know, I also provide live stream service. I've been doing that. As you can see, I've been live streaming the BCYL, the Bridgeport Caribe Youth League. I've been pro um, broadcasting their um, youth basketball uh, tournament. Um, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, they had to stop the tournament a couple of weeks ago. But it's going to be picking back up, hopefully, God willing, in January. But yeah, you know, uh, Janice, uh, did his, um, you know, that's my plan to expand, to grow, and to give other people opportunities to have something like this of their own. All right? So let's see. Any other questions, you guys? Hit me up with your questions. Um, Benny Gonzalez, can't wait, can't wait uh, to be on the hot seat. On the fifth, yeah, man, you better be ready, man. It's gonna it's gonna be a good time, Benny. We're gonna have a blast when you come down here next Tuesday. All right, you guys. So let's see other questions that I have here. Um, full time job. I already read that one. Oh, uh, oh. When did you decide you wanted to open a studio? And how difficult was it? Good question. The reason why I decided that I wanted to open up a studio is because, as I stated earlier, I did ten shows at home. I started this show at home in the basement of my house. Um, after the 10th show, I said, you know what? I'm limiting myself. I'm limiting myself by having this show here at home because I just can't bring anybody to my house. Um, you know, high, high traffic. It's, it's just insane. I can't, I can't do that. So that's what motivated me to open up this studio. Honestly, at first I was nervous. I was extremely nervous. I was looking around and eventually, you know, through word of mouth, I was able to find this place right here which is located at um, 240 Fearford Avenue, a car street from Murphy's Law. I found this place. I met this gentleman who owns the building named John. And, um, you know, uh, from JB Management, John brought me in here. He showed me around. And, you know, as soon as I seen it, I fell in love. I fell in love with the building. I fell in love with just everything about the studio. Um, I love the fact that it's so clean. It's, it's very secure. You know, this place is ran like a jail. I'm going to be honest with you. Really, really secured in here. So, you know, God bless you if you try to get in here. There's cameras everywhere. There's alarm system. But, you know, what motivated me, like I said, was um, the fact that I was limited of, you know, doing the show at home. I found this location. Me and uh, the owner, John, from JB Management, we, we came to a deal two years ago. And look at two years later, I'm still here. So, you know, big shout out to John, man. I thank John for this opportunity. Um, this thing, this arrangement, agreement worked out so perfect you guys and um, i'm gonna remain here until i find you know something bigger i'm gonna remain here until i feel that that god is telling me now it's time expand grow just just blow up you know blow it out blow you know knock the walls down and and, and do something at a bigger level so this is where i'm gonna be at for right now you know so i uh, big shout out to john from jb man jb management um also you know what i want to give a big shout out to all my uh, my advertisers as you can see behind me i got aces bell bond right I got um, 
uh, Miranda and Sons Automotive, Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop. I have, um, I said Aces. Who else I have? Jeez, I can't even remember. Oh, Evolution Sports Bar and Cafe, Evolution's Barbershop. I have, oh my God, I can't think of everyone right now, but they're all on the screen right now. Um, I mentioned uh, Miranda and Sons, but you know, all you guys who advertise with me, I truly, truly thank you. Uh, because if it's not for you, I would not be able to do what I do each and every week. All right, you guys. So let's see. Any other questions? Because I'm starting to wind down. I'm about to get out of here, you guys. Jay, I know God has big plans for you. Giovanni Alvarez just stated. Thank you so much, Giovanni Alvarez. And um, I have to throw that right back at you. Because I truly believe that God has big plans for you as well. You're an awesome brother, man. Benny Gonzalez is saying, who influenced you to want to be a broadcaster? Whew, good question. You know what? I think who influenced me was, it's not one specific person. Um, it, was, it, it was a multiple people, meaning being exposed into the sport of boxing. But one of the individuals who I really, really like, he's actually a friend of mine who I really enjoyed always watching him in his um, um, operating in his, in his craft is a uh, boxing uh, commentator, uh, Ray Flores. I don't know if you know who Ray Flores is, but he's uh, a part of PBC. And Ray Flores, so every time you see uh, Premier Boxing Champions, those fights on PBC, Ray Flores is one of those commentators, ringside commentators. He's also in the ring, um, giving the introduction of each side of the opponents who are going to be fighting. I always liked Ray Flores, man. I always, I always watched him when I was at the events. I would always watch him work his craft, the way he would operate, the way he would um, uh, uh, sit down and, and, and prep himself and, and study and and um, all the uh, the time he would invest into you know into his craft because and it was evident by how good he is ray flores is amazing all right you guys so if anyone influenced me i think it was ray flores uh, just watching from from uh you know from the outside um in all right so let's keep going guys any other questions before i get out of here uh i'll text you later my mother said all right yep text me later all right so let's see one last question all right, guys, you know what? I'm done with the questions. All I got to say is this. It has been an amazing ride. It has been a great blessing to be able to do this show each and every Tuesday nights. Some of you guys watch on our website at SuperEliteEntertainment.com. Some of you watch on Facebook. Facebook Watch, regular Facebook. There's some of you watching right now on YouTube. Some of you are watching on Twitch and Periscope. There are a bunch of you that are listening on our podcast whether it's Anchor or Spotify. Um, I truly, truly thank each and every one of you for tuning in on a weekly basis. Thank you for the love and thank you for the support. Thank you to all the guests who have come here in 2020 to sit on my hot seat, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Thank you for your stories. Thank you for, the, for your influence. Thank you for your, uh, for your courage coming here into the studio and being willing to open yourself up to communicate to my viewing audience, whether you're a male or female, whether you're a nurse, a doctor, an insurance agent, whether you're bagging uh, groceries at Walmart, whether you're driving for Uber, all of you who've been on, in my studio on my hot seat, I just want to give you a big shout out and say thank you for the opportunity to be able to interview you this year, 2020, during the pandemic. Um, because I'm sure that your story has influence in has impacted lives. I want to thank all of you, the viewing audience. If it's not for you, I would not be able to do this, you guys. I would not be able to do this each and every week. Uh, hold on. Oh, God bless you. Conrad. Conrad is saying, have you ever thought about writing a biography? Excellent question, Conrad. Yes, I have. And I know it's going to be coming eventually at some point. It's going to be coming. I don't know when. But, yeah, that's a good question. You know, uh, um, I've had a lot, a lot of people recommending that i sit down and, and write an autobiography but it's coming it's going to be coming soon all right you guys so make sure that when that book hits amazon make sure you prime that baby make sure you go to barnes and noble and you make sure you purchase my book when it comes out all right <laughs> all right so again like i was stating thank you guys so much for for the opportunity thank you for for just being there and and showing me your support there's a lot of you who reach out to me um, after the shows, there's a lot of you who send me text messages. There's a lot of you who send me messenger uh, uh, messages in Messenger, um, whether it's through Instagram or Facebook. There's a lot of you who send me emails and, and reach out to me. Some of you 
uh, when you do reach out to me, you know, it's a simple, hey, you know, love your show. Uh, your broadcast was awesome tonight. Uh, you know, it's just a simple acknowledgement, uh, uh, you know, of, of on your behalf. And those little messages that you guys send me, I truly appreciate them. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person I really don't get. I really don't get awards and I don't I don't look for awards. I don't really get awards. I don't really get acknowledgement. I'm the type of person I, I really don't. You know, I just don't get anything, man. I don't get diplomas. It's not something that I look for. All right. As long as I can, as long as I get to come here into my studio and to be able to broadcast as I do every Tuesday, like I'm doing right now, um, that's all that matters to me is I love broadcasting. And I love the fact that you guys are still right there on the other end, on the other end of this broadcast watching because we've been going for quite some time now. So with that said, you guys, I'm going to get ready to close out the show. Um, the show is going to be closed out with a, a recap video, a recap video of... 2020 all right let me make sure i find it is a recap video of 2020 um hopefully i didn't miss any of the guests that been here throughout this year but again you guys thank you so much for tuning in tonight thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to you um stay strong stay focused stay consistent because consistency is the ingredient the consistency is key all right so stay consistent and uh, stay motivated uh stay focused on on your goals on your dreams uh, we're going into a new year so you know new year's resolution a lot of you guys get ready to hit the gyms uh-huh the gyms are about to be packed and that's all right stay consistent when you start hitting the gym get in there stay with it stick it out get healthy and um whatever your your new year's resolution is make sure that you follow through with it whether it's getting in shape whether it's hey i'm gonna start going to church i'm gonna start reading my bible i'm gonna go to the masjid i'm gonna go to the hall I'm going to go and speak to the imam, to the pastor. I'm going to go get count, whatever the case may be. Whatever changes you're looking to make in your life for 2021, I highly encourage you to do it, to follow through with it, to stick it out, and to watch the results of your hard work and dedication. Because if you follow through with whatever it is that you're looking to, to make changes in your life, I guarantee you that if you stick to it, you will reap the benefits of that decision you make. But anyhow, I've been talking for way too long. I am out of here, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you for uh, for all the love and the support. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for all the hearts and all the likes and all the comments. And thank you just for everything. I'll be back next Tuesday night at, you know what? I was going to say 7 o'clock. I also want to throw out there. The show now is going to be 8 p.m. I'll be back next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. with Bachata artist uh, Benny Gonzalez, who will be making his trip all the way down here to the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, so that he could be right here with me on the hot seat. I'm looking forward to next Tuesday night with Benny Gonzalez, you guys. So thank you so much. Um, stay encouraged. Maria Alvarez is saying very encouraging words. Thank you, Maria Alvarez, for the acknowledgement. Anna Cecilia is saying congratulations, Jason, Jason. Wishing you a very happy and safe new year. Thank you, Anna Cecilia. Raquel, my cousin Ramos, is saying God bless you. And, you know, God bless each and every one of you who tuned, who tuned in tonight. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to leave you with this amazing, beautiful video uh, showing you the recap of 2020. God bless. Have a good night. See you next Tuesday night from Super Elite Entertainment Studio right here in downtown Bridgeport, you guys. Take care. God bless. I send you nothing but love. Nos vemos. Here from the city of Bridgeport, here with me. What's up, John? Hi, right, what's up, baby? How you doing? It, it, it got me. It went something inside me telling me, you gotta be a better person. You, you gotta be somebody. And when I first went out there, I did good. I gave Danny the work that he wanted. You know what I'm saying? And so just look out, look out for his new video coming soon, right? That's right. Yeah, so what? All of them. Put them in a. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, all over the city. Take them all off the streets. My middle Damn. daughter, Lauren, and my youngest son, Larry, and I have an awesome husband. Hey, Larry. <laughs> and you've been delivering meals ever since your business got shut down. You've been delivering- uh, Platforms. And then on the 15th, you'll have it on Apple. Very big part of my life, you know? Um, and it was gonna be a, a huge, I mean, it was just gonna- say it, that We're kind of glad because, um, 
we have encountered more information about the virus. Encount Video tribute that I made for my brother. You know, I've always been around addiction. Okay. You know, at 12 years old, um, I went with my visit www.prp fc.org Vincent's hospital and their initial assessment was to my parents um you know sorry miss mori but she's not going to make it through the night there's nothing else we can do for her so neighbors that i owe anyone i have no deals to cut with anyone what i a full-time job so if i'm walking down the street and i hear somebody riding by playing a song or you know if i if i go dealing with with just that whole scenario i mean i understand that you know what god is on your side and god has faith you want to pursue for um owning your own or you you obviously need to start by taking your property and casualty license as well. So I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican as well as Italian. Mm -hmm. So as a Puerto Rican and Dominican, it's hard to uh, have somebody tell you that somebody who has oppressed your people. Not doing that. It's mm -hmm. that simple. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, there's a lot of conversation of defund the police. Uh, I, 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 me personally, I think even if they weren't to defund them, even if he said. When you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto God. Mm. And, keep, and, and keep the balance. Yeah. You know, I've been fortunate. I have a great group of people around me. Uh, in the church, we have an awesome staff. Uh, who They work hard. Is that you can, uh, it's possible to open a business here in downtown. Yeah, like um, I tell to everyone that, you know, at the end of the day, it's not just business that I'm doing. You know, I obviously, I have reach out and speak speak forward absolutely mm -hmm. so I'm trying to think what else we need to touch <laughs> on <laughs> so you know, I've, I've been on the periphery of our union for years mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, my qualifications now and my education are gonna allow me to you know I put positive post I don't put any you'll never see a political post somebody will say oh I want to be electro engineer but do you really know what it takes to be an electrical engineer? So we'll bring, I was like, you know what, maybe this could be something that I could do. So I started making a couple phone calls. I remember I, I called a few schools, check out the prices. And they used to have programs like RBI. They used to have all these different avenues that kids can take for inner city baseball. This is the former, t the team that Josh Gibson played for. Don I can see the people's reactions and everybody, you know, if they're mm -hmm. enjoying it, if they're enjoying it. What could I do better with myself on stage, you know? I never looked at myself as a comedian. Yeah. I looked at myself as an actor who writes funny stuff. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, people start saying, oh, there's the Christian comedian. The so, you know, there's no more excuse as to why you can't start your own business anymore. Shout what out the hot boy GFX out of Texas. He's now in, Me in Mexico. I just worked with a cipher um, gra graphic. Yes, you can. This is me to say, uh, I, I, I want to take this time out to just to thank my mother. Mommy, if you get to see this thank you papi you too that package you have a higher chance of being able to buy a house but if one of those ducks is not and he made my first drops that i still got to this day you know right in front of me and then um that's when everything start wow you know? but you know what i want to backtrack i want to backtrack okay. you know um there were so many failures so many failures that that kind of shaped me, that they didn't kind of shape me to who I am today. Literally with every failure, I've failed so many.